Our first question today is about self-attention in transformers. What is the primary purpose of self-attention in transformers? Option A, to reduce computational complexity. Option B, to allow tokens to attend to other tokens in the sequence. Option C, to prevent overfitting. Option D, to increase model parameters. The correct answer is B, to allow tokens to attend to other tokens in the sequence. We chose this answer because self-attention is fundamentally about creating connections and relationships between different parts of the input sequence, allowing each word to understand its context by examining every other word simultaneously. Self-attention is a mechanism that allows each word, or token, in a sequence to directly connect and analyze relationships with every other word in the same sequence simultaneously. Unlike traditional attention that looks at external information, self-attention examines internal relationships within the input sequence itself. Simply put, it's internal relationship mapping. The layman explanation shows us how in the sentence, the red car that John bought yesterday is fast, self-attention helps AI understand that red describes car, John is the buyer and fast describes the car, regardless of word distance. In essence, it's like perfect conversational memory. Our real-time example demonstrates connection across word distances. Red to car is one word apart, John to car is three words apart, and fast to car is eight words apart. This shows distance-independent understanding. The memory tip tells us self-attention equals same sequence attention, like looking in a mirror and seeing how all parts of yourself relate to each other. Remember, mirror reflection relationships. Our next question focuses on multi-head attention architecture. How many attention heads does GPT-3 use in each layer? Option A, 8. Option B, 12. Option C, 16 in the largest model. Option D, it varies by layer. The correct answer is C, 16 attention heads in GPT-3's largest model. We selected this because GPT-3's architecture specifically uses 16 parallel attention mechanisms in each layer to capture different types of linguistic patterns and relationships simultaneously. Multi-head attention runs multiple self-attention mechanisms in parallel, each focusing on different types of relationships. Each head specializes in detecting specific patterns, some focus on syntax, others on semantics, context, or dependencies. The outputs are then combined for richer understanding. Simply stated, it's parallel expert analysis. The layman explanation shows us how it's like having 16 expert specialists analyzing one sentence, a grammar teacher, literature teacher, logic teacher, and 13 others, each providing unique insights. This creates incredibly rich combined understanding. Think of it as expert consultation team. Our real-time example demonstrates 16 specialists working on the quick brown fox jumps, head one handles grammar, head two processes adjective noun pairs, head three manages action semantics, and so on. This shows specialized parallel processing. The memory tip reminds us multi-head equals multiple experts, like consulting 16 specialists instead of just one doctor for a complete diagnosis. Remember, specialist consultation approach. Our next question addresses a crucial transformer limitation. Why do transformers need positional encoding? Option A, to reduce memory usage. Option B, to handle variable sequence lengths. Option C, because transformers lack inherent sequence order information. Option D, to improve gradient flow. The correct answer is C, because transformers lack inherent sequence order information. We chose this because unlike RNNs that process words sequentially, transformers process all words simultaneously, so they need explicit position markers to understand word order. Positional encoding adds location information to each word in a sequence. Since transformers process all words simultaneously, unlike RNNs that process sequentially, they need explicit position markers. Absolute encoding gives each position a unique signature, while relative encoding focuses on distances between positions. In summary, it's location information system. The layman explanation demonstrates why position matters using dog bites man versus man bites dog. Same words, completely different meanings. Without positional encoding, transformers would see these as identical. 
This shows critical word order importance. Our real-time example shows position encoding values. Position 1 gets 0.1, position 2 gets 0.5, position 3 gets 0.9, like giving each word a street address, so AI knows exactly where each word lives in the sentence. This demonstrates address assignment system. The memory tip teaches us position equals postal code. Every word needs an address, so the AI mailman knows where to deliver the meaning. Remember, Postal Address System Our next question examines normalization placement in transformers. Where is layer normalization typically applied in a transformer block? Option A, only at the input. Option B, only at the output. Option C, before and after each sublayer. Option D, only in the decoder. The correct answer is C, before and after each sublayer. We selected this because layer normalization is strategically placed multiple times throughout the transformer to maintain stable gradients and consistent value ranges at every processing stage. Layer normalization standardizes the inputs across features for each individual sample, making the mean zero and standard deviation one. Unlike batch normalization, which normalizes across the batch dimension, layer normalization works on each sequence independently, making it ideal for variable length sequences in transformers. Simply put, it's individual sequence balancing. The Lehman explanation shows how wildly varying test scores like 95, 23, 87, 12, 91 get balanced to similar ranges like 1.2, minus 1.1, 0.8, minus 1.3, 1.1, preventing some neurons from overwhelming others. This creates neural balance. Our real-time example demonstrates volume adjustment in a choir, ensuring every voice can be heard equally, preventing some singers from drowning out others. This shows balanced audio processing. The memory tip tells us layer norm equals level playing field. It keeps all AI neurons playing fair, with no bullying by big numbers. Remember, fair play enforcement. Our final question today covers feed-forward network architecture. What is the typical ratio of the feedforward network hidden dimension to the model dimension in transformers? Option A, 1 to 1. Option B, 2 to 1. Option C, 4 to 1. Option D, 8 to 1. The correct answer is C, 4 to 1 ratio, meaning four times larger hidden dimension. We chose this because transformers consistently use this 4x expansion pattern to create sufficient processing space for complex pattern recognition while maintaining computational efficiency. Feedforward networks in transformers are simple two-layer neural networks that process each position independently. They expand the representation to a higher dimension, typically four times larger, apply nonlinear transformations, then compress back to the original size. This creates a powerful processing bottleneck that enhances the model's ability to learn complex patterns. In essence, it's expansion compression processing. The Lehman explanation shows us this works like photo editing, taking a 1024 pixel photo, enlarging it to 4096 pixels to see fine details, applying sophisticated filters, then compressing back to 1024 pixels with much richer processed information. This demonstrates enhancement through expansion. Our real-time example shows GPT-3 with 1,024 input features expanding to 4,096 hidden features, then back to 1,024 output features, like having four times more thinking space for complex relationships. This shows computational thinking space. The memory tip teaches us feedforward equals food processor. It takes ingredients as input, uses a big mixing bowl for 4x expansion, processes everything, then serves the final dish as output. Remember, kitchen processing analogy. That concludes our comprehensive journey through transformer architecture fundamentals. You now understand the five core mechanisms that power modern AI systems.